Hello, I'm Rabia Tuba Boy, and you're watching Buckingham News. Our top stories. The university celebrates its 40th anniversary in style. Buckingham celebrates and pays its respects for Bastille Day. And we explore the effects of the Brexit vote. Since the referendum vote to leave the EU, hate crime and racial discrimination has seen its largest recorded spike. Police have urged members of the public to report hate crime as tensions rise. Laura Hughes has the story. Since the June 23rd vote, there have been massive spikes in the amount of hate crime and vivid reports of people born abroad receiving verbal abuse or menacing behaviour within the United Kingdom. The police have said the number of hate crime recorded for the last two weeks in June have spiked by 42% on this time last year. With tensions rising, the police have urged members of the public or anyone who may have been a victim of a hate crime to make a police report. The University of Buckingham has a strong stance against racism and hate crimes. Long history, right from the very beginning of the university, back in 1976, of having an extremely multiracial and multicultural society, uh, we have been used uh, to dealing with the occasional pieces of tension uh, between students. Chief Inspector Helen Roberts from Thames Valley Police said, It has been my experience that this is a cohesive and forward-looking community, and I am grateful to everyone that none of the extremely divisive and hateful incidents that have been reported in the national media have been replicated in our town. We are encouraged that the national debate has given greater exposure to the nature of hate crime and the ways in which people should respond to it. I personally haven't um, experienced any racism, but I think that's also because like, I'm not in the European Union as such in my country. So No, no, me personally, I haven't experienced anything like that. It's just a feeling that you have. That well, personally, I haven't had any encounters with such kind of, kinds of racism or anything, or I haven't ha heard any of my friends in, uh, encountering such situations. Most international students at the university have not experienced racial discrimination. In spite of what is happening across Britain, Buckingham and the university remain a culturally inclusive community. This is Laura Hughes for Buckingham News. Buckingham residents came together to celebrate the French national holiday of Basti Day last Friday with a sizzling barbecue and a game of Jeux du Boule. Those in attendance also reflected on Thursday's lorry attack in Nice that left at least 84 people dead. Khashia Adebite has more. The tricolor was flown at half-mast in Buckingham on Friday as a show of respect for the 84 people that were killed in Nice on Bastille Day, with many more seriously injured. Despite these tragic events, Buckingham residents still came together to celebrate Bastille Day with a jeu of boule competition and barbecue for all visitors and residents in town. Very, very nice to see actually this morning, for example, I had so many emails already from um, people from Mouvo and from Buckingham um, letting me know exactly how they felt and just really. And I think just in a way that sometimes very, very sad events, but it's um, all come together and it's really nice show of solidarity from both both really just uh, sides of, of the channel and um, and I think just we shouldn't be put off trying to organize events like that and I think just we need to try to work into a peace peaceful world. Bastille or La Fête Nationale in French celebrates the storming of Bastille by French revolutionaries in the 18th century. Fittingly at troubling times like these it also honors and respect the unity of French people. Stephanie set up the twinning between Buckingham and Mouveau and we held a minute silence uh, at the beginning of the tournament as a mark of respect for the people that died in Nice. Further information on the attack continues to come to light. It did not perturb the people of Buckingham from enjoying today's events and the traditional game of Les Boules. This is Hasha Degbeter for Buckingham News. Au revoir et bonne Bastille. Last weekend, the University of Buckingham celebrated its 40th anniversary with a series of special performances. This included a condensed play of Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. Vilde Elgan has the story. To be or not to be. <laughs> In light of the 400th anniversary of the birth of Shakespeare and the 40th anniversary of the University of Buckingham, Two special evenings celebrating the Bard and his works were held on the 15th and 16th of July. 
Tickets for the event were sold at £7.20 and included an array of refreshments throughout the night. The performances were split over two locations. The first recital was of Shakespearean songs, sonnets, and vignettes at the Radcliffe Centre. I think it's a very special feature of the university. I don't think that happens in many unis at all. Our amazing people at Buckingham to keep this university going, getting ever stronger, growing in size over those 40 years, uh, is a fantastic achievement. The second was a condensed performance of A Midsummer Night's Dream in the candlelit gardens of Ondaje Hall. The play was a huge success as applause filled the garden. The university looks forward to celebrating many more years. This is Vel Dalgan reporting for Buckingham News. The medical school opened its gates to Buckingham locals over the 40th anniversary weekend, showcasing the latest addition to the university, Joanna Lynn has the story. The medical school, now in its second year, allowed visitors to take a sneak peek at the clinical skills labs, anatomy rooms, as well as giving them some hands-on experience with the simulation equipment used in medical training. The purpose of the open day is to show the local community what's happening in the medical school. Uh, it's a new enterprise, it's created a lot of interest and it's one of the few opportunities that those people would have had a chance to come and have a good look around and talk to the key players. Along with a tour of the medical school facilities, there was a special appearance from the medical detection dogs. These dogs are trained to sniff out potentially life-threatening diseases, and assistance dogs can be used to help people who suffer from type 1 diabetes, Addison's, and even severe nut allergies. One half of the charity trains assistance dogs um, who, live with, who go and live with clients, and the other half um, I work in research on cancer detection. So the ones that work on cancer detection don't interact with the patients at all. They work on samples. Local GPs, current students and teachers were all on hand to show how the medical school is helping to shape the future outlook of medicine in Britain. This is Joanna Ling from Buckingham News. A variety of activities took place last weekend to commemorate the university's 40th anniversary. One particular activity saw a reenactment of the 1665 Hale Witch Trials at the Old Jail presented by the law school. Zoe Briggs went to find out more. Black cats, flying broomsticks and cackling laughter are often what we associate with witches, but the horrific truth of the Hale Witch Trials in the 17th century may surprise some. The witch trials were a series of hearings and prosecutions of people accused of witchcraft in colonial Massachusetts between February 1692 and May 1693. The trials resulted in the executions of 20 people, most of whom were women. Sir Matthew Hale is still honoured as one of the best minds in English jurisprudence. His work throughout 1600s formed the basis for many of the laws that still exist today. However, it was his role as judge during the infamous Hell Witch Trials that inspired today's performance by the University of Buckingham's Law Department here at the Old Jail. What makes this one stand out is that we actually have a formal report of the proceedings, so we can actually base what we're doing this afternoon on an actual report. Of the Law School did something similar about 20 years ago um, in front of a, an audience in the, the town hall there in town, and the Dean of the Law School when we were looking for ideas for the 40th anniversary of the university, thought, why don't we do that? It worked well last time, let's try it again. How say you? Are you guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. <laughs> Everything is hearsay, so I'm not guilty. I'm a bit apprehensive about how good it would be, but I think it's really well organised. I think they've done it really well. <laughs> On the evidence uh, given, guilty. Anniversary celebrations are set to continue for the rest of the weekend, but at least nobody can accuse the law school of not putting on a good show. <laughs> this is Zoe Briggs for Buckingham News. In other news, the university's Sports and Societies Fair took place last Wednesday. With an abundance of different activities and groups on display, freshers and returning students alike were able to peruse the stalls and join up to anything from the North Atlantic to the cheerleading squad. Society committees will now be hoping to turn this early interest into regular membership. The university is holding its Raise and Give Week until Saturday 23rd July. All contributions will be in aid of YC2, Young Carers Youth Club and Buckingham AED for portable defibrillators. 
Monday's fun run raised £26 and first place winners Josiah Rush and Morgan Bonson each won £10. Various other events are being held throughout the week and Santander will be matching all money raised. Pokemon is back with the new augmented reality game Pokemon Go. The game was released last Thursday and in just a few hours it was the most downloaded app in the UK. Jason Dunn has the story. The free-to-play augmented reality application Pokemon Go was released less than a week ago, but it's already proving to be a monster hit. The main aim is to catch Pokemon that can appear anywhere from your local park to your shower. The game provides an augmented reality experience using the smartphone's camera and GPS location to provide a live view of the world, with Pokemon superimposed. While the game may be getting people out of their homes and walking around their neighborhoods, there have been a number of reported Pokemon-related injuries. Gamers have walked into people, lampposts, and even crossed roads without looking as they have been too engrossed in the game. Some criminal opportunists have used lures to bring their Pokemon playing victims to a specific spot before robbing them of their phones and other valuables. I haven't seen so many people outside, sort of just walking around town, sort of enjoying the weather and so on in a long time. Uh, honestly, I think it's a waste of time, isn't it? Because um, with the amount of uni programs and stuff, I think it's a bit more stress, it's a bit, it's a bit distracting. I think anything that gets you out from your room, off your settee, get out, walking around, exercise, you know, fresh air, I think that's a good thing. Awesome. Even though you are looking for something that's strange. Uh, yesterday I saw a, a dad bringing his two kids around to catch Pokemon, so as long as it gets people outside um, and together, then I don't see it as a bad thing. Pokemon Go has certainly swept across the population, but make sure to be always aware of your surroundings while, as the game suggests you, catch them all. This is Jason Dunn for Buckingham News, and I'm going to catch that slowpoke. The psychology departments at Buckingham are opening their doors to allow prospective students a glimpse into their futures. These hour-long mock tutorials have proven a successful alternative to open days and are now being picked up by other departments across the university. Caspian Chalice has more. Potential university applicants to the psychology department spent Wednesday afternoon engaging with university academics and learning of the success of the university's small tutorial groups, as well as meeting the department's tutors and lecturers. So I think the main benefit here is that the thing that, the thing that is distinct at Buckingham is the tutorial teaching model. And what we've found over the years is when we talk about small group teaching, to some people that can sound strange or odd. It's not even similar to their experience at college or school, let alone their standard university experience. The University of Buckingham is renowned for its high quality of teaching, achieving the University of the Year for Teaching Quality in 2016 from The Times. Unlike regular open days, the potential applicants will have the opportunity to experience teaching firsthand as they engage with university academics. We've pioneered this, uh, as I say, about a year and a half ago. Now we know that the business school, humanities, uh, the law school, I understand, will all be doing versions of this kind of process. Other departments within the university hope to use the model that the psychology department has provided. The next taster session will take place in August, with tickets being available online via the university website. This is Caspian Chalice for Buckingham News. The Barton Park paddock was bustling with canine activity last Sunday. Our four-legged friends gathered from all over Buckingham and the rest of the country for the annual Buckingham Town Council dog show. Tyler Cork has more. This is the third year Buckingham Council had held the event after last year's dog show became a rousing success. The dog could be placed into eight different classes including behavior, dog with the waggiest tail and best in show. No matter your favourite kind of dog, it's likely represented here in all its perfection, with judges pouring over the entrance with a fine-toothed comb and deciding which dog made the cut. Um, it originally started out as a dog awareness event um, because we had a lot of people that had staffies that were running loose in the parks and we did a, a small dog show and the dog show was so popular that it's gone from there. I think it's been, it's done very well, it's gone very well. Um, dogs are well behaved, some of them are quite amusing, so are the owners. Um, yeah, it's just a good, fun event. There's nothing serious about it, it's not crufts, it's just Buckingham dogs out for a day. The dogs weren't the only thing attracting owners to the show. Organisations such as the Medical Detection Dog were on hand to give information on ways to improve their dog's behaviour and maintain their health and safety. 
The Vet Central and Maids Morton, Les Steel, a local dog groomer, and Hamilton Hydro sponsor prices of dog food, toys, and all kind of canine gear for the Winnie entrance. All events, in addition to the dog show, were well received by hundreds of dog lovers who came on Sunday. On and off, Buckham annual dog show proves to be an unforgettable event, and organizers are planning many more events like this in the future. This is Tyler Cobb, Buckingham News. Now over to sports with Khashia Adebite. Thank you, Rabia too. Sports also played a large part in last weekend's 40th anniversary celebrations with the return of the Chancellor's Cup, signaling the chance for each school to compete against each other in a number of disciplines. Paul Rutland talks you through it. It's not often that each school within the university gets the chance to directly compete with each other, so the Chancellor's Cup competition is the perfect opportunity to bring those inter-school rivalries to the fore. From five-a-side football to volleyball and ultimate frisbee to rugby, this competition gives each school staff and students the chance to get one over their uni foes. In the end, despite defeat in the final tug of war competition, it was the law school who walked away with the bragging rights. This is Paul Rutland, Buckingham News. The University of Buckingham's Badminton Society is being joined by a special guest for their session this evening, with former Olympian Gail M set to appear at their club night. We sent Henry Thompson along for their most recent session to see how preparations were going for their star visitor. Gail Ems, a bona fide British badminton legend, is to grace the courts of the University of Buckingham's badminton club tonight. The Olympian is going to teach a masterclass with all society members and afterwards host a Q&A session which is open to the entire university. Really good. Um, it's a great thing to inspire people to you know, pursue sport at the uni. Former world, European, Commonwealth and British champion, the Milton Keynes resident shot to fame in the 2004 Athens Olympics by claiming a silver medal alongside partner Nathan Robertson, and it is hoped that her amazing experiences will rub off on the students here in Buckingham. To bring uh, kind of local sporting champions in um, and to have someone of Gail's calibre um, and come in and work with our students is, is really fantastic. Uh, the football club worked with Milton Keynes Dons, um, so we're really starting to grow that network of um, kind of respected professional athletes that came to the university. There is certainly a sense of anticipation ahead of Miss M's appearance here in Buckingham, so tune in next week to Buckingham News to get the full story. This is Henry Thompson for Buckingham News. This summer we'll see the town versus gown rivalry take on another twist as the University of Buckingham is set to play the Buckingham Lawn Tennis Club in a hotly contested fixture. Chris Armar has the story. With its home here in Shandos Park, the Buckingham Lawn Tennis Club is set in picturesque surroundings known for their peace and tranquility. However, this summer the notion will be shattered as the sound of hard-fought competition on the court takes over. Uh, well, we, we'd clearly love to win, but we'd also like to get some new members, student members, because actually uh, we're a small club and it would be really good to get some students down to diversify our membership because we're all of a certain age and it'd be great to get some younger students. The University of Buckingham is to take on their town rivals in a town versus gown fixture later in August. Though with the university not currently having a tennis team, tryouts are going to take place next Monday, July 25th, here in Shandos Park. We've got some quite strong players here and not so strong, so we want a nice friendly game so that everyone has some fun. With another exciting competition between the town and gown on the horizon, all that's left for me now is to get the strawberries and cream organized. This is Chris Armar for Buckingham News. That's it for the sports roundup this week. Now back to Rabiatu in the studio. Over the last 50 years, the number of cherry orchards in England have been reduced drastically, leaving just 5% of the cherries we consume daily coming from the UK. Raising awareness for National Cherry Day on Saturday 16th July, Owen Hughes baked a delicious cherry pie. Just 10 of these small sweet cherries counts as one of your five a day. 
They're even thought to have medicinal effects, such as helping you get to sleep and even helping with pain relief. So, what better excuse do you need when National Cherry Day comes round on the 16th of July to enjoy a scrumptious slice of pie? To follow this recipe, you'll need approximately 550 grams of cherries, two tablespoons of plain flour, four heaped teaspoons of black cherry conserve, approximately 75 grams of caster sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, 20 grams of butter, and 500 grams of short crust pastry rolled into two separate balls. Roll the balls out flat and line a good sized, well greased dish with one of them. Bake at 180 degrees for around five to 10 minutes or until it begins to firm slightly. Next, pit the cherries and halve them before adding to a bowl and mixing with flour, sugar and vanilla extract. Once thoroughly mixed, add the remaining butter and cherry conserve. Add the filling to the pie dish and layer with the rest of the pastry, baking at 180 degrees for 35 minutes. Leave to cool for 20 minutes before serving. Still warm with a dollop of clotted cream on top. It looks delicious, it smells delicious and it tastes delicious too. Give it a try yourself. This is Owen Hughes for Buckingham News. Thank you for watching Buckingham News. We will leave you with a short montage of our 40th anniversary celebrations. See you next week. This has been an immense success. People have enjoyed the croquet, we've had tea, we've had cakes, everything's been adorned in an Alice in Wonderland style. Who could ask for anything more on a lovely summer's day? Yes, it's just lovely to see everyone mixing and enjoying themselves and the sun is shining, which is Absolutely. I think it's been really nice, it's nice to see a lot of people coming in, both students and staff, but also people from back home as well coming in. So it's like a real community event, that's, that's really nice to see.